What you see happens when Oklahomans are confronted with a problem. They call a meeting. Busy people from all parts of the state attend. Bankers, lawyers, housewives, doctors, educators, farmers come to listen, learn, and decide on a course of action. A great university opens its doors to house the conference. The governor of the state who called the meeting is present. No one doubts that a solution will be found. You, the viewer, are part of the solution to this problem. Where do you fit in? Because libraries in Oklahoma lag behind our neighbors, the Oklahoma Council on Libraries asked Governor Bellman to call a statewide conference to discuss library problems. Attendance was by invitation only. Invitations went first to outstanding citizens who had not previously been involved in library activities and who might not be fully aware of Oklahoma's library needs. Invitations went to every county in the state and every leadership level. Some outstanding librarians and library board members were invited to serve as resource persons. 441 persons accepted and met in the University of Oklahoma's Center for Continuing Education on September 23, 1964. While those who arrived early were registering, discussion leaders, recorders, and resource people held an early morning briefing session. Twenty-two discussion groups were organized and leaders were briefed. Discussion leaders were urged to give everyone present an opportunity to contribute to the discussion. Meanwhile, coffee and rolls tasted good to those who had left home before breakfast. Some had driven halfway across the state for the meeting. All but five of Oklahoma's 77 counties had sent representatives to the conference. The act which created the Oklahoma Council on Libraries reads, it shall be the policy of the state of Oklahoma to project, foster, and further the establishment and proper maintenance of superior libraries. The delegates gathered in the forum room for the first general session. Governor Bellman was the first speaker of the day. The purpose of Oklahoma's first conference on the development of libraries is to help demonstrate the great benefit which communities receive from having adequate library services available. One of the things I've discovered as governor of Oklahoma in trying to attract industry to our state is the fact that the most desirable type of industry is more interested in brain power than in manpower, and they generally look for communities which will give the people in their companies a chance to develop intellectually over the years and to keep current in the fields of endeavor in which they are experts. For this reason, I hope that all across Oklahoma, community, le community leaders will begin to develop effective programs for providing adequate library services locally, and certainly on a state level, this administration will do everything we possibly can to be sure that Oklahoma communities do have an opportunity to provide the sort of library services which our citizens need and deserve. Theme of the conference was good libraries build better communities. Governor Bellman's remarks had made his administration's position clear. The principal speaker for the conference was Richard C. Millett assistant to the president of the International Paper Company and former director of the March of Time. He spoke on the subject, good libraries, a necessity, not a luxury. I'm sure I don't have to tell anyone here that we are in the midst of a reading and learning explosion. 
Since 1940 alone, newspaper circulation in the United States has increased 45%. Magazine circulation has gone up 110%, and the number of books sold has increased by 445%. Now, this is a rate of growth 10 times faster than that of our population. What does this mean for reading in libraries? Obviously, it's been an increase in reading for recreation, but the point I'd like to stress today is we're now much more engaged in the business of reading for study. This is reading after we get through college. And without library resources we, to turn to, it would be exceedingly difficult for anyone to collect all the various periodicals and books coming out in all fields of endeavor. And this is true no matter whether we're an accountant, a taxman, a farmer, a doctor, a teacher, or you pick your field. But without continuing one's study after school and college, one becomes rapidly out of date and therefore falls sh uh, very, very far behind. Of great importance to the libraries of Oklahoma was the report of Mr. Francis St. John, nationally known library consultant. The Council on Libraries had promised that there would be a preview of the St. John survey at the conference. Mr. St. John spoke matter-of-factly about his findings so far. His facts were startling. The survey of library resources in the state of Oklahoma shows that the situation in relation to almost all kinds of libraries is not good, largely because of the fact that the state is a big one. People are scattered in very low populations in many of the counties, and there is a tendency to have a single library which is completely inadequate for the needs of the community. As I got around the state, I found that most of the people that I talked with, and this included library trustees, had no conception of what a modern library meant. They knew the library as a circulating agency for books, sometimes many of them old and very worn and battered. Uh, it was largely used for recreational purposes by children and by uh, mothers, but the concept of the library as an educational institution, as a force in the community and the economic activity of the state, uh, was uh, something that had not been realized, except in a very few cases, such as Tulsa City County, where a very live type of organization is doing a great deal for the commercial and business community, as well as for the general educational pattern. I believe firmly that Oklahomans must change this pattern of thinking about libraries, and that one of the ways of doing this will be by education. That they must learn to work cooperatively, to get together as far as planning library resources and the use of those resources, and that in order to do this, a substantial amount of money will be involved, but very little money when it is compared with the amount that now goes into some of the functions of the state which have been recognized as important, such as common school fund, higher education, the welfare fund, public assistance fund. The state does need to step in and to help the counties where the taxation, the valuation of land is now so low that they have no hope, even by joining two, three, or four counties together, to have a, an adequate fund to take care of the library situation. A total plan must be developed. This should include operation uh, through the State Library, or as a funnel of aid and advice to libraries throughout the state, a plan for the complete development of facilities on a sound economic basis where there would still be the type of trained help necessary to give the best of assistance, where sufficiently large collections of books, and I would recommend a minimum of 100,000, uh, should be developed. This can be done if the people in the state of Oklahoma will work together to convince the, themselves and their legislators that this is going to be important to them and to their family. If it is done, then I'm sure that the economic benefits to the state 
will more than pay the cost. The St. John Report envisioned a network of libraries, college, school, public, and special, giving every person of every age immediate access to the information needed for home and career. The audience had a great deal to think about. Discussion buzzed in the halls and continued as participants moved from the forum into the luncheon meeting. Discussion continued at lunch, and guests compared their own library situations with their neighbors from other communities. Library leaders and honored guests sat at the head table. Mrs. Weldon Lynch, Governor Bellman, Mrs. Della Thomas, and Dr. E.E. E. Shearcliffe, John Bennett Shaw with Francis St. John, Ali Beth Martin, conference chairman, confers with Edmund Lowe and other library leaders. Mrs. Martin introduced the speaker, Mrs. Weldon Lynch, a past president of the American Association of Library Trustees. Mrs. Lynch this year was awarded a distinguished merit citation for her work in her own community and state and nationwide in behalf of better libraries. She made a strong appeal for citizen support for libraries in Oklahoma. So we have here in your state a double barrel situation. We need citizen recognition of the problem of not enough libraries and not good enough libraries, and citizen support for extending library service all over the face of Oklahoma until all citizens may be served by public libraries and until school libraries and college and university libraries may meet standards, always measuring our progress as we go, not by, by how far we have come, but by how far we have yet to go. And there's a double-barreled threat in our double-barreled situation here, too. The same two things are going to dog us in both of these endeavors both in improving existing libraries and in creating new ones. The name of one of these ugly beasts is apathy, and the name of the other one is indifference. Both of these exist, and every one of you here who has tried to arouse the public to some pressing need knows it. They aren't exactly hostile, nor yet opposed. They simply take the attitude that if we don't notice them, maybe they'll go away. Well, the only way to appeal to such a public is to turn away from the great apathetic mass and speak to the individual citizen. Citizens who recognize that good libraries are vital to our free society, our free world. Citizens who care about education, who care about the library. Remember, a little leaven will lighten the whole lump. And there is enough leaven right here in this room to lighten the whole lump of Oklahoma. You who cared enough to come here today, you are the ones we must look to. We look to you to tell the library story. We hope that today you have become infected with the virus of discontent with things as they are. For if you become actively concerned about Oklahoma's libraries, you can change things. If enough of you become actively concerned, you can tell Oklahoma citizens what needs doing. You can tell them and sell them and make them do it. Many of the right first steps have been taken. You are looking toward a good library law. You have the Oklahoma State Library and the Oklahoma Library Association to provide leadership and guidance. You have the Oklahoma Council on Libraries, and believe me, this is attracting national attention to encourage development. You have instituted a statewide survey of libraries and what they offer to provide guidelines for the future. The right first steps have been taken. 
And now we look to you to give high priority to concern for libraries. Participants went into the discussion groups with a lot of work cut out for them. They had learned that other states, such as Mississippi and Arkansas, have more libraries and better libraries than Oklahoma. A total library plan is needed to equalize library opportunities. Most other states already have state aid programs for public libraries. Oklahoma does not. School libraries have poor book collections, and few have full-time librarians. Time was too short. Some questions had to go unanswered, and some topics unexplored. Nevertheless, each group came up with some helpful recommendations to solve Oklahoma's library problems. The crucial point seemed to be that people in Oklahoma do not know what really good library service is. Some groups recommended that the first step should be a program of informing everyone in the state about the library situation. Regional meetings would give more people a chance to study the problem and begin local action. The final St. John report, soon to be completed, will give a blueprint for action. Mr. Edwin Castagna, the president of the American Library Association, closed the conference. Here is something of what he said. As you create libraries for Oklahoma's future, you will be investing in a sure thing. You will be adding to your state resources and not depleting them. Starting a library is not chancy like dr drilling an oil well. You will never have the equivalent of a dry hole. You may exhaust your oil and your gas as you have almost exhausted some of your soil through erosion. But your libraries will be ever more powerful sources of energy as they grow with your support. The more they're used, the more power they will supply. Brains and knowledge will never be used up or eroded. They will be sharpened and enriched with heavy use. And your libraries of the future will supply much of that sharpening and enrichment. You are beginning a new Oklahoma run, but not for land this time. This time it's for something to make the land and its people infinitely richer. I believe that you, the descendants and followers of the pioneers, will leave a magnificent library system to your successors. Today, September 23rd, 1964, may not turn out to be as famous a date in Oklahoma history as April 22nd, 1889, but it can be a great and memorable day. And you, who are as aggressive in the run for libraries as those 89ers were in locating good land, will have a special and honored place in the hearts of the millions who will benefit from your action in bringing them better books and libraries. And this time, it will be an unmistakable honor to be known as a Sooner. By now, those who attended the conference realize that libraries in Oklahoma are not going to get any better until we do something about them. Good library service begins with individual citizens like you and me working in our own communities. Nobody else can do it for us. The Oklahoma Council on Libraries was created by the Oklahoma legislature in 1963 to examine and overview the whole state of libraries, make recommendations, and report to the governor. The council expresses appreciation to the civic leaders who have demonstrated their continuing interest in Oklahoma's libraries. <laughs>